In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, my sisters and brothers, may the Lord give each of you the gift of his peace. Here we are, station number two, in our journey through the Via Lucis, the stations of light. And station two is the disciples find the empty tomb. We begin. We adore you, O risen Christ, and we bless you, because by your resurrection you have given new life to the world. Here's the scripture, and it's the Easter Sunday scripture. I'm happy to read it again. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the church. The two were running together, and the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him, and he went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in the place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went, on, went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Reflection. The empty tomb is the womb of our faith. The risen Jesus transforms emptiness into fullness, darkness into light, the silence of God into beautiful news. Mary Magdalene and the disciples are stooped in their tracks as they behold the empty tomb. Speechless and confused, their world is about to be shaken by the mysterious truth that is beyond human understanding. Yesterday I shared with you, this seems to be everybody's running, Mary runs, Peter runs, John runs, John outruns Peter, but they're all running to someplace, they're all running from someplace, or to someone, and from other things. Uh, and today, they, their running brings us right to the empty tomb, and you know, John is dropping a bunch of hints to remind us that Jesus Christ is truly risen from the dead, and the first is the empty tomb. Think about it for just a moment. Jesus was such a political, hot figure, uh, I wouldn't want to be the guards uh, who were supposed to stand to guard on that overnight vigil, making sure nobody rolled the stone away. Or I should say, I wouldn't want to be in their sandals uh, when everything came crashing down around them and they were confronted with it. So the first hint that I think John gives us about this is that the tomb is empty. The stone has been rolled away. And it, with Jesus being such a hot and polarizing figure, you know something very interesting is happening there. Number two... You see, we notice that the, the burial plots are still there. John is very specific in leaving this point. I read a commentary in preparing for Easter Sunday that said that this is another clue that John is giving to us that Jesus Christ truly rose from the dead and that the body was not robbed or stolen or taken. Why? Because linen burial cloths were very expensive and the fact that the body was not there but the linen cloths were there, were a sign that nobody had been in there yet. And the other thing, and I've heard, uh, read different commentaries on this as well, John makes it very clear that the, the napkin which covered the face of Jesus when he was placed in the tomb was just rolled up and put into a corner in a place by itself. And some people have speculated that this has references to a, a formal supper in first century Palestine that if the Lord or the lady of the manor or of the house or somebody really important had servants waiting on them and serving them a meal, if you were finished with your meal, you'd fold the napkin up nice, and that was code that the, the, the meal was over. But if you were going to come back to the table, and sometimes meals and parties lasted for a really long time, but if you weren't done yet, you would just roll up your napkin and you'd put it off someplace. This way the servants would know I'm not finished yet, I'm coming back. And that's what I'm reflecting on today on the second station of light. The empty tomb, the linen cloth is there, the linen cloth rolled up in a corner back uh, and somewhere else reminds me of the mission of Jesus. The resurrection is part of it, but Jesus, the risen Lord, is still active and part of our lives. 
and we have, he has yet to send the Holy Spirit. He has yet to be ascended into heaven, and he's active in our life and in our world today. I love those words. By the napkin being just thrown into the corner like that, I'm not done yet. I'm coming back, and so it is with our Lord. Let us pray. Eternal fullness that transforms all emptiness, flood into our minds and hearts, that we may believe the truth proclaimed by the empty tomb. Help us to distinguish what is permanent from what is temporary and to understand the differences between them. May we choose wisely how to live as disciples renewed by Jesus' Passover. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Hope you liked today's video, and I hope you uh, follow it, you like it, and you share it. See you tomorrow.